chapter one, review and ask questions, question number six. How long does it take the second hand of a clock to move through four radian? Uh, so we know that a clock, the second hand of a clock travels in 60 seconds. One rotation for a second of the clock is 60 seconds. Delta T is equal to 60 seconds. Uh, in 60 seconds, second of the clock rotates by an angle of 2 pi radian, yani 6.28. Angle of displacement is equal to 6.28 radian. So simply you can use um, cross multiplication. You can write it like this. Uh, 6.28 radian takes, takes 60 seconds. So question, 4 radian rotation, rotation of 4 radian takes how many seconds? So simply cross multiply them. 6.28 multiplied by x is equal to 4 times 60. Then x is equal to as if you do this calculation, you are going to get the answer as 38.2 seconds. This is one of the way you can uh, solve it by this way. Or uh, a little physical method. First, you calculate the angular speed of the second hand. If 6.20 is ready in 60 seconds, so angular speed of the uh, second hand is this, this division. Then the same angular speed it takes uh, how many seconds for radian you make them equal to each other so by this way again cross multiplication you can get the answer as again 38.2 seconds next question question number seven question number seven says that uh, a drill starts from rest yeah the initial angular speed of the drill is zero after 3.2 seconds of the constant angular acceleration. So the drill turns at the rate of uh, 2,628 radian per second. It is a final angular speed. So it says rate, rate is uh, speed, it rate means speed. By looking at the unit, you can also understand it is the angular speed, final. So find the drill's angular acceleration. So after 3.2 seconds, so delta t is equal to 3.2 seconds, we will find what we will find what is the drill's angular acceleration. We know angular acceleration is equal to final speed minus initial speed divided by delta t. Final speed is given, initial is given, delta t is given. Just simply write them and calculate the angular speed. Angular acceleration, sorry. Determine the angle through which the drill rotates during this period. So we want to know the angular displacement. Determine the angle through which uh, the drill rotates means calculate the angular displacement delta theta. So you know initial angular speed, you know final angular speed, you know time, you know you can simply calculate the delta t by using this equation. Initial plus final speed divided by two multiplied by delta t, this is the equation. So initial speed is zero, final is known, 2628 divided by two multiplied by time, 3.2 seconds. So answer is 4205 radian. Next question, question number eight. Question number eight says that when a wheel rotates about a fixed axis, do all the points on the wheel have the same tangential speed? It is not. We know that if a wheel rotates, uh, say it is a wheel, so, or let's say it's something like this, it's a disk. So if it is rotating, so every point on the wheel rotates with the same angular speed, you know, omega is the same. However, according to the distance, uh, from the axis of rotation, tangential speed changes. If the point is farther from the axis of rotation, tangential speed becomes greater because they are directly proportional. Question number nine. Correct the following statement. The racing car rounds the turn at constant velocity of 145 km hour. So if a car is turning around, direction of the motion continuously changes. 
So if direction of the motion changes, because velocity is a vector quantity, velocity also changes. So we cannot say a constant velocity if direction of the motion changes. How can we make this statement correct? The racing car runs to turn at a constant speed. So because speed is a scalar quantity, an object can move on a circle with a constant speed. Next question, question number 10. Describe the pair of the of a body moving a body describe the pair of a moving body whose acceleration is constant in magnitude at all times is perpendicular to this velocity it is the uh, uniform circular motion constant in uh, magnitude means you know magnitude of the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r if v is constant and r is constant ac is constant but we know that Acceleration always points to the center of the center. Acceleration always points to the center of the rotation. But V always tangent to the circle. So then, because then they are perpendicular to each other. Question number 11. An object moves in a circular pad with a constant speed V. Is the object's velocity is constant? So if speed is constant, magnitude of the velocity is constant, but direction can change. For that reason, this is not uh, always correct. This could be correct only if the object moves on a, uh, on a straight line. Is the, its acceleration is constant? Because it's moving on a circular path, it is a centripetal acceleration. At all time, but because of the direction of the centripetal acceleration changes, so it has its acceleration is not constant. Let me show like this. So object is here. Acceleration, acceleration is pointing to left, but when object is here, so acceleration points to right. As you see, direction of the centripetal acceleration changes, so we cannot say that acceleration is constant. Maybe we can say the uh, magnitude of the ex centripetal acceleration is constant, not centripetal acceleration itself. Question number 12, give an example of a situation in which an automobile driver can have a centripetal acceleration but no tangential acceleration. Centripetal acceleration only exists when an object turns a round or a circle on a circle with constant speed. So in this case, only centripetal acceleration exists but no tangential acceleration. Tangential acceleration only can be exist if object is speeding up or slowing down. If the automobile moves on a circular pad with a constant speed, the driver has a centripetal acceleration but no tangential acceleration. Question number 13. Can a car move around a circular racetrack so that the car has a tangential acceleration but no centripetal acceleration? If the, it's a circular track, impossible. Always there will be exist a centripetal acceleration. This is not possible. Question number 14. If the gas pedal and the brakes of a car accelerate and decelerate the car, yeah, and by pushing the gas pedal, you can accelerate the car. By braking, you can decelerate the car. Could a steering wheel perform either of these two actions? Explain. Steering wheel only used to change the direction. So if you change the direction, object gains centripetal acceleration. Only centripetal acceleration. So for that reason, maybe we can say that object accelerates, but we cannot say it is decelerating. Question number 15. A small pebble breaks loose from the treads of a tire uh, with a radius of 32 centimeters. So a radius of the tire is 0.32 meter. If the pebble's tangential speed, the yani with tangential is 49 meter per second, what is the tire's angular speed? Uh, the relation between the angular speed and tangential speed is this, Vt divided by r, simply you are going to write and uh, divide them, you will find the uh, angular speed of the tire. So question number 16, this is a minister exam question before it's asked. A building superintendent twirls a key set of keys in a circle at the end of a court. Yeah, and this is a court, this is the key, so it's rotating on a circle. And uh, if the keys have a centripetal acceleration of 145 meter per second squared, so centripetal acceleration is 145 meter per second squared, and the court is a length of 0.34 meter, so this 0.34 meter length is the radius. What is the tangential speed of the keys? So uh, we can use the definition of the centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration is equal to tangential speed squared divided by r. 
simply cross multiply them after get this square root tangential becomes tangential speed becomes tangible the wave equation multiplied by i divided of do the square root of that multiplication so then uh, uh, central wave equation is 145 reduces 0.34 then you will get the answer as 7 meter per second next question question number 17 imagine that you attach a heavy object to one end of a spring and then while holding the spring other end whirl the spring and object in horizontal circle does the spring stretch why spring must stretch because uh, the object is move, must move on a circle if object is moving on a circle and force must keep the object on the uh, circle that force is the spring force and this spring force comes from the uh, uh, stretching the spring so if the spring stretches more that force also increases which is the centripetal force question number 18 uh, why does the water remain in a pedal that is what in a vertical path as shown in figure so you are going to rotate a some uh, uh, water inside a pail in vertical but if you rotate it with a speed with a speed enough speed v tangential speed v the water will stay inside the pail why because if the water and the pail have enough tangential speed in this case centripetal acceleration of the pail will be equal to vt squared over r r is the radius of the rotation if centripetal acceleration is equal to gravitational acceleration greater or equal to gravitational acceleration then the water will stay inside this pail without uh, falling down question number 19 explain the difference between centripetal acceleration and angular acceleration centripetal acceleration only uh, can be calculated if direction of the motion changes. Angular acceleration is calculated when the object is speeding up or slowing down. Comment on the statement, there is no gravity in outer space. There is no gravity in outer space means because distance is increasing from the, sand, from the earth in center to the space, uh, gravity decreases and uh, uh, as distance increases gravity decreases acceleration decreases that's why maybe if we say there is no gravity in the space it means gravity is so less because distance to the center of the earth is so far question number 21 it says explain why earth is not spherical in uh, shape uh, why it bulges at the equator now think that this is the shape of the earth so this is the uh, equator this so this is the equator these are the poles for the point which is closer to uh, poles radius is small for the point which is at the equator radius is big because your is a rigid object it's rotating with a angle of speed omega so both of them is rotating with the same angle however the tangential speeds are different tangential speed 2 and tangential speed 1 so 2 is greater than 1 yeah and it's Tangential speed at the equator for each particle is greater than tangential speed at a point closer to the poles. If tangential speed is big, inertia of the substance becomes greater. So then, um, so gravitational force which keeps the particles on the circle is not enough to keep the uh, particles on the circle. For that, as the particles are starting to move on a, a larger radius a circle. So next one, question number 22. Because Earth, because of Earth's rotation, you would uh, weight slightly less at the equator than you would at the poles. Why? So think about that. Uh, at the at that point, this point, two forces acting on the object. One of them is the gravitational force. Second one is the normal force. Scale measures the normal force, not F J. If uh, you sp stand up on a scale, you measure F N. So centripetal force is the force uh, pointing to the center of the rotation for that is an fg must be greater than fn so net force is fg minus fn which is the centripetal force then if you write fn from this equation fn becomes gravitational force minus centripetal force so because centripetal force is maximum at the equator and the uh, r is big so then uh, this difference becomes smaller so fn becomes uh, smaller if you wait on the equator because centripetal was zero so 
uh, fn is zero but if you measure your weight at the equator because centrifugal force is maximum fn is smallest question number 23 why does mud fly of a rapid turning wheel so i think this is a wheel so uh, the muds are sticked on the wheel surface of the wheel the force which keeps this wheel is the adhesive force yeah and it is uh, mud uh, sticks to the surface when the uh, wheel starts to rotate with angular speed the mud is also moving with at the same angular speed if speed increases according to the equation uh, m uh, omega squared m r omega squared also increases so then the adhesive force which is a centripetal force keeping the mud on the circle cannot be enough to keep the object on the circle so for that reason uh, the mud uh, leaves the uh, the wheel and moves tangent to the uh, cir uh, circle surface of the wheel question number 24 Astronauts floating around inside the space shuttle are not actually in zero gravity environment. What is the real reason astronauts seem weightless? So, um, think that you are inside an airplane, uh, an airplane is falling with the gravity G, and you are also falling with gravity G with the airplane. So, if because you don't touch anywhere, uh, you don't feel the weight, your weight. And to feel your weight, you should touch somewhere and there must be a contact between some surface and your body. Because the uh, space shuttle also have the same acceleration with the astronaut, uh, even sp uh, gravitational acceleration sometimes can be very zero, very close to zero. So because they are not touching anywhere, they feel themselves as uh, weightless. The point is this, they can, uh, they move with uh, the same acceleration of the space shuttle, for that reason they don't touch anywhere, because they don't touch anywhere, they don't uh, feel uh, the weight. Question number 25, it says, a girl at the state fair swings a ball in vertical circle, as you see, in vertical circle, the ball is uh, swing. Is the force applied by the string greater than the weight of the wall at the bottom of the pad? As you see, this is the bottom of the pad. Upward third is Ft tension force. Downward is Fg, which is Mg. Because here is the center of the rotation, centripetal force must be upward. If centripetal force is upward, then Ft must be greater than Mg. So Ft must be greater than Mg. In this case, centripetal force and resultant force can point the center of the circle. A roller coaster car speeds down a hill past point A, then rolls up a hill past point B as shown in figure. This is the figure. The car has a speed of 20 meters per second, so it is a tangential speed, uh, 20 meters per second. If the resultant force on the car is 2.06 times the power of 4 newton, this is the, of course, centripetal force, 20,600 newton. At this point, what is the mass of the car? So, radius of the pa uh, curve is given, 10 as meter. So, we will find a mass. We know what centripetal force is. Just simply, you can use the centripetal force equation. Mvt squared over r. This is the question. So m becomes r times fc divided by vt squared. R fc divided by vt squared. You can calculate the mass of the car as 515 kilogram. In part b, if this roller cost cost in part b, uh, what is the maximum speed uh, the car can have at point b for the gravitational force to hold it on the track? Now, uh, initially it is. Uh, uh, moving from the curve uh, upside down, or let's say con uh, the curve is pointing up now, curve is pointing down. So from this point B, as it passes from this point B with a tangential speed, question says that only the gravitational force hold it on the track. Then uh, there is no contact between the nearly no contact between the uh, pet uh, track and the car. So only centripetal force is the gravitational force. So then gravitational force is equal to centripetal force. From here you can cross multiply and will cancel. The tangential speed square becomes r times g. Then a tangential speed becomes root of r times g. Simply write 
R and G and get 12. Find the average angular uh, speed of Earth about the sun in radian per second. Hint or average sun every two, 365.25 days. So for one complete revolution, angular displacement for every object, it can be Earth or any other object which makes a circle, its angular displacement is 6.28. So uh, time for uh, one complete revolution is 365.25 days. So we should convert to this to second. Then after that, simply we are going to use the uh, average angular speed equation, delta theta divided by delta t. Delta t is equal, delta theta is equal to 6.28 radian, delta t is 365.25 days, every day is 24 hours, multiplied by 24, every hour is 60 minutes, multiplied by 60, every minute is 60 seconds, multiplied by 60. So this uh, calculation will give a result 1.99 times 10 to the power of uh, minus 7 radian per second. Question number 28. The tube within a washer goes into its spin cycle, starting from rest, which means initial angular speed is zero, and reaching an angular speed of 11 pi radian per second. So final angular speed is 11 pi radian per second in eight seconds, so delta t is equal to eight seconds. At this point, the lid is open, and a safety switch turns off the washer. So the tube slows down to rest in 12 seconds. So then, for the tube initially accelerating when attains this angular speed uh, switch is switch turns off the washer and the washer starts to decelerate so in the question we had two uh, two steps in the first step uh, it's accelerating from 0 to 11 pi and the second step it decelerates from 11 pi to 0 but acceleration takes 8 seconds, but deceleration takes 12 seconds. So final angular speed is 0 in this case. Question says, through how many revolutions does the tube turn? Assuming constant angular acceleration while the machine is starting and stopping. So acceleration is constant here and there. So this is easy because um, first we will calculate angular displacement in the acceleration part. If you know angular uh, acceleration, angular displacement can be calculated by initial plus final divided by 2 times delta t. Initial is 0 right here. Final is 11 pi divided by 2 multiplied by in 8 seconds it accelerates. 44 pi radian is the initial, uh, the angular displacement, the uh, time when the, it's accelerating. Then the tube starts decelerating. This time, initial angular speed is 11 pi, final is 0 divided by 2 multiplied by 12 seconds because time is 12. You got the uh, angular displacement during the deceleration, 266 pi radian. The total displacement will be some of them. Yani 44 pi plus 66 pi, 110 pi radian. So we should convert it into a uh, revolution by dividing 2 pi, because we know that every revolution is 2 pi radian. So 110 pi divided by 2 pi, which becomes 55 revolutions. Next question is, an airplane is flying in a horizontal circle at a speed of 105 meter per second. So this is the tangential speed, 105 meter per second. When it's one meter per second, you are going to understand it is tangential. If 80 kilogram pilot, so mass of the pilot is 80 kilogram, does not want as the centripetal acceleration to exceed seven times free fall acceleration. Free fall acceleration is g. So, sensible acceleration will not be greater than 7 times of this acceleration and 7G. Maximum it could be 7G. Find the minimum radius of the plane's path. So, sensible acceleration is 7G. Tangential speed is given. So, you are just going to simply calculate what R is. R is equal to Vt squared over AC. Vt is 105. AC is 7 times G, 7 times 9.81. So, radius of the uh, planes Paris 160.6 meters. This question has a part uh, B. A part B, but I couldn't find it. Okay, maybe. Ah, yeah, right here. So at this radius, what is the net force that maintains circular motion exerted on the pilot when the seat belts 
the friction against the suit and so forth. We are just going to calculate the net force. It is very simple because net force according to second law of motion mass times acceleration. Acceleration of pi is only centripetal acceleration. Mass is known, 80 kilogram. Acceleration will not be greater than 87g, 7 times g. So you will find the force acting on the pilot's uh, body is 5,494 Newton. Next question, question number 30. It says, a car is traveling 30 meter per second undergoes a constant negative acceleration. It says negative acceleration, be careful, uh, of the magnitude 2 meter per second squared. So initial, angle, initial tangential speed is 30 meter per second. And it, acceleration, which is not tangential, it is a tangential acceleration, not angular, because it is the uh, negative, so we are going to put here negative sign, minus 2 meter per second squared. When the brakes are applied, they are slowing down. The speed is slower, and this car is slowing down. How many revolutions does each tire make before the car comes to stop? Now, stop means finally the uh, speed of the car is zero. Assuming that the car does not skid and the tires will have a radii of 0.3 meters, so radius of the one wheel is 0.3 meters. So, as you see in this question, there is no time. So, we are going to use the equation without time. Final speed square is equal to initial speed square plus 2a delta s. It says how many uh, revolution. However, first we calculate the total distance traveled by the car. Then we are going to convert it to revolution. Distance traveled by the car is final speed square minus initial speed divided by minus 2a. So final speed because the car stops zero. Initial is 30. Minus 2 times minus 2, which is the negative acceleration. So we find the distance traveled by the car is 225 meters. This is the arc length traveled by the by, uh, by the car's tire. So we know that delta to the angular displacement is arc length divided by r. Arc length is 225 meters. R is 0.3 meters. So you calculate the uh, angular displacement as radians, 750 radian. Now convert radian to revolution. How? Uh, revolution, angular displacement revolution is angular distance in radian divided by 2 pi. This is 550 radian divided by 6.28. Uh, then you will get the answer as 119.4 revolutions. Question number 31. A coin with a diameter of 2.4 centimeters. So it is diameter, not radius. Be careful. 2.4 centimeters is diameter. So radius is half of this number, 1.2 centimeters. So radius is equal to 1.2 centimeters, which is 0.012 meter. It's dropped onto a horizontal surface. The coin starts out with an initial angular speed. This is initial angular speed, 80 and radian per second. And rolls in a straight line without slipping. If the rotation slows with an angular acceleration of magnitude, 1.9 radian per second slows. So it is negative because it slows, one point, negative 1.9 radian per second squared. How far does the coin roll before coming to rest? Coming to rest means final angular speed is zero. Again, uh, we will find this time distance, but all given are angular quantities. First, we will find what the angular displacement is, then convert it to distance, which is arc length. As you see, there is no time. Again, we are going to use the this equation final speed square is equal to initial speed square plus 2 alpha delta theta. Delta theta is equal to final squared minus initial squared divided by minus 2 alpha. Final is 0. Initial is 18 squared minus 2 times alpha is 1 minus 1.2. So delta theta becomes 85.3 radian. So this is the angular displacements. We will find the corresponding arc length because of the uh, Coin travels the arc length. Calculate the corresponding distance. Delta theta is delta s over the r. Cross multiply them. Delta s equal to r times delta theta. R is, we just wrote it before, 0.012 meter multiplied by delta theta. 1.02 meter is the mm -hmm. distance traveled by the uh, coin before coming to rest. Next question, question number 32. A mass attached to 50 centimeter string starts from rest. Again, as you see, start from rest. Initial angular speed is zero. Is rotated in a circular path exactly 40 times in one minute before reaching a final angular speed. So we will find that final. What is the angular speed of the mark after one minute? So what is given? Because the mass is attached to a third, uh, 50 centimeter string, so the mass is moving on a path which whose radius is 50 
centimeters so reduces 0.5 meter starting from rest but it uh, rotates 40 times which means angular displacement of the object is uh, mass is 40 revolutions in how many minutes one minute one minute is equal to how many seconds six seconds so calculate the final angular speed now use this equation uh, because time is known, uh, delta theta is known, initial is known, just you are going to calculate what uh, final is. So delta theta is uh, then cross, simply cross multiply them. So omega final becomes 2 times delta theta divided by delta theta minus omega initial. From this to that you can get it. So 2 times delta theta is 40 uh, revolutions divided by delta t 60 second negative minus zero so this is the final angular speed in revolution per second however this revolution must be converted to radium by multiplying 6.28 by multiplying them you can get the answer as 8.4 radium per second question number 33 at 13 point uh, 13,500 newton car traveling at 50 km per hour. So this is the tangential speed, 50 km per hour. Rounds a curve of radius of 200 meter. Radius of the rotation of circle is 200 meter. Calculate the centripetal acceleration of the car, AC. But this is given in uh, kilometer per hour. We should convert it to meter per second to get the answer to meter per second square. 50 km, every uh, kilometer is 1000 meter. Every hour is 3600 a second. So when you do this multiplication, you will get the answer as 13.6 meter per second. Then use the equation for simple centripetal acceleration, tangential speed squared divided by r. So tangential speed, we just converted from 50 to 13.9 divided by radius, radius is 200. So you will find the centripetal acceleration as 0.97 meter per second squared. Same question, part B. The minimum coefficient of static friction between the tires and the rod that will allow the car to go around the curve safely. We will find what is the minimum coefficient, mu s. So when the car is uh, turning around, uh, there are two, three forces acting on the car. One of them is fg downward, the other one is f and upward, but static friction force points the center of the rotation circle. For that reason, static friction force is the centripetal force. How to calculate static friction force? 11 class title, coefficient of static friction multiplied by normal force is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. So normal force, because these two forces are equal in magnitude, so instead of more normal force, you can write mg, m will cancel. So you will calculate s is equal to ac divided by g. ac, you calculate it in part a, 0.97, g is 9.81, when you divide it, it's nearly equal to 0.1. So the coefficient of static friction between the tire and the ground or the, the track is 0 0.1. Next question. 2,000 kilogram car rounds a circular turn uh, of reduce 20 meters. So then uh, car is 2,000 kilogram, reduces 20 meters. If the road is flat and coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.7. So it's flat and 0.7. Calculate how fast the car can go without skidding. So calculate the tangential speed, the maximum speed that the car can move without skidding. Again, force of friction is the centripetal force. Fg is down, Fn is up. Centripetal force is the static friction force pointing the center of the circle. We make them equal, write the same thing. Static friction is coefficient of static friction multiplied by Fn. This is the equation for static friction force. Centripetal force is equal to m v t squared over r. Uh, so Fn again is equal to mg. Simplify m. You are going to calculate v t squared as mu s r mu s r g mu s r g. If you multiply across, multiply here. So then squared of mu s r g will give us the speed maximum speed the car can attain because, uh, on the curve without skidding. Mu s is 0 0.7 given. R is 20, 9.81 is G, multiply and get the square root is 11.7 meter per second. 25 is also very similar to the previous question. It's about again the force of uh, static friction. A copper block rests 30 centimeter from the center of the steam turntable. The coefficient of static friction between the block and the surface is 0 0.53. Just split record the uh, coefficient of static friction. The turntable turn starts from rest and initial angular is zero. 
uh, rotates with an constant angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is 0.5 radian per second square. After what time interval will the block start to slip on the turntable? The block will start to slip if uh, static friction force is not enough to keep it on the circle. So we should find at what speed it will start to uh, skid first. So uh, static friction force, which is mu SMG, will, will be smaller than centripetal force will not be enough to keep uh, the object on the circle. So then, omega m will cancel. Omega squared will be greater than, or maximum, it can be equal, minimum, uh, maximum, uh, it, it can be equal to mu sg divided by r. Then, omega is equal to mu sg divided by square root of mu sg divided by r. So we can calculate uh, mu s is given as 0 0.53, g is 9.81. Uh, R is 0.3. When you do this calculation, you can calculate the final speed the uh, disk can have just before the copper block starts to skid is this. So, in how many seconds the uh, still, still turntable reaches this uh, speed, we can use the kinematic equation. Final speed is equal to initial plus alpha delta t. You know, initial is zero. We know final, we just calculated. Alpha also given in the question, so all the thing you should know is to calculate delta t. Delta t is equal to the final minus initial divided by alpha. Final is this initial is zero. Alpha is 0 0.5. It's given in the question, so time is 8.32 seconds. And the last question is the extended response 11. Mass or orbits the sun. Sun of the mass. Mass of the sun is this. At a mean distance of 2.22. 8 times 10 to the power 11 meter. This is the radius of the circle of the Mars around the Earth. So, mass of the Sun is this. Radius of the circle of the Mars around the Earth is around the Sun is this. Calculate the length of the Mars in your in Earth stake. Show all your work. So, the force which keeps the, uh, let's see, this, this is the Mars, or Earth, it, actually, this is the Sun. So, around the Sun, the Mars is moving. The force which keeps the Mars, this is the Mars, on the circle is the, of course, gravitational force between the Sun and the Mars. How can we calculate this gravitational force? G, mass of Sun, mass of Mars, divided by radius of the circle. So, equation for centripetal force is what? Because Mars is moving on that circle with angle of speed omega, Mass of Mars times R, radius of the Mars, of rotation of the Mars, multiplied by omega of Mars, angular speed of Mars. So then, uh, mass of Mars will cancel. You can calculate the angular speed of uh, Mars around the Sun, which is G, mass of Sun, divided by R, R cube. How I cube? Just R times R squared, it becomes R cube. Now then, uh, square root of the equation both sides, you will calculate G, the square root of G, as mass of Sun, divided by radius of the rotate uh, circle, the cube of the radius of the circle. Then uh, calculate it, g is this number, mass of sun is that, radius of the circle is this, and you will find the angular speed of the Mars. Applying the definition of angular speed, omega is equal to delta theta, they want delta theta, because time is asked, I cross multiply them, delta theta is equal to delta, delta theta divided by omega. We know that for one complete uh, circle or revolution, angular displacement delta theta is 6.28. Omega, which is the angular speed of the Mars, is this we just calculated in the first part. Write it there. Calculate the time of one complete uh, revolution around the Sun as second. This is second. Second must be converted to days. How? Every second is 60 minutes divided by 60. Every minute is 60. Uh, Every hour is 60 minutes, so divide by 60. Every day is 24 hours, divide by 24. You are going to get the answer as 649 days.